For this example, we're going to require that the max overshoot for this system is less than or equal to 20% and that the rise time of the system is less than or equal to 0.3 seconds. So we can calculate the uh, required damping ratio and natural frequency from the relationships we found in class that MP is e to the minus pi times zeta over square root of 1 minus zeta squared, which gives us that zeta has to be greater than or equal to 0 0.4559, and that the rise time is approximately 1.8 over omega n, which gives us that the natural frequency needs to be equal to, or approximately equal to, 6 radians per second. We're going to let our control law, C of s, be given by k times kp over kd plus s, and we're going to let z equal one, uh, kp over kd because that is the zero of the compensator, or of our, our uh, PD control law. Notice this is, in a, this is in a slightly different form than we're used to seeing it, but it still is a proportional derivative control law. Making these substitutions into the characteristic equation of the closed loop transfer function, assuming unity gain of the system, we get 1 plus k times z plus s times 1 over s times s plus 1 is equal to 0. Multiplying through, we end up with s squared plus s plus k times z plus k times s. And collecting terms, we have s squared plus 1 plus k times s plus kz is equal to 0. So for this closed loop transfer function in the terms of the characteristic equation, to have the properties we are requiring up here, we need this to be equal, this term here to be 2 times zeta omega n, and this term over here should be omega n squared. Knowing what omega n squared and zeta need to be, we can find that 1 plus k is equal to 2 zeta omega n, and we can find then that k should be 2 times 0 0.4559 times 6 minus 1, which is equal to 4.472. Likewise, we can find that z needs to be omega n over k, which comes out to 8.0501. Let's go ahead and verify these results in MATLAB and then actually add a lead compensator as opposed to a PD controller and to see how the performance of the system changes. Let's go ahead and start our analysis in MATLAB by first defining the transfer function of the open loop using a TF object at 1 and then 1, 1, 0. We can define z as 8.0501 and k is equal to 4.472. We can define our controller using the tf command as k times 1 and then z. And then the, numer the denominator here is 1. Got to put the multiplication in there. And then we can define the closed loop transfer function using the feedback command where we enter the forward path, which is c times g and then the feedback path, which is 1, because it's unity feedback, and the command assumes negative feedback. And there's our transfer function. Notice the natural frequency here is 30, uh, 36, or natural frequency squared. And notice there's this 0 up here. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens when we enter the system into the step command. We see that if we look at the peak response, it's actually more than 20%. The rise time is much less than 0.3 seconds, but we definitely have a lot of overshoot. This overshoot comes from the location of the zero. Let's see how we can impact this. So let's take our SISO tool. We'll pass in the plant G.
first let's go ahead and enter our compensator. So the compensator we're going to add is we're going to add a, a real zero, and we're going to change its location to be at where z is. So that's minus 8.0501. And we need to change the gain of the system to 4.472. Once we make these changes, and we can go ahead and look at our analysis plots, look at a step input to the system, we see that we got the same uh, response that we did when we were looking at this using uh, the, inter the command line interface. Notice what's going on over here is that in, in this plot over here that the pole locations are given here and here and there's uh, for this particular gain there's um, the root locus and that, there's where our zero is. Now watch what happens as we go ahead and we move our poles around, then we can affect the rise time of the system, but it's fairly difficult to affect the uh, max overshoot without severely impacting the rise time. So what we'd maybe like to do, which is, of course is just changing the, the closed loop uh, gain of the system, what we'd like to do is potentially maybe move this zero around. Because notice what happens as this zero gets closer to the uh, the poles of the system. And one way we can do this is by adding a lead filter. So let's go ahead and delete this pole zero. And let's go ahead instead set this back to one on the closed loop gain. And let's go ahead and add, instead of adding a real zero, let's add a lead filter. Here's our step response. And we can go ahead and put characteristics in here like rise time. And notice there is no max overshoot. And we can now start to change the location of the zero in the pole. We can also do that over here by dragging these around. Here's the poles and the zeros. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is <clears throat> here's our max overshoot. Now that's at 3%. And here's our zeros. We're going to move these poles, which is the closed loop gain, out until we reach our final desired uh, requirements. And notice what happens as the rise time gets uh, shorter, the max overshoot goes up. And if we go kind of extreme here, we've met our rise time requirement with the closed loop gain that's around 8. But we're, we're not meeting our max overshoot. So if I drag this pole and I move it further back out, I can find a set of uh, gains in my lead lag filter which will easily satisfy my performance requirements. So roughly in this range I can go ahead and tweak this a little bit uh, as we desire. Move that to say 7 and 7.1, and we get a max overshoot of about 19, and we get a rise time of about 0.2. This meets our requirements, and we don't have a pure derivative here anymore, and our uh, pole and zero are relatively far away from each other, so they're not canceling each other out, and we would, wouldn't have problems with noise. A simple example of using a lead filter to meet performance requirements.